Hello everyone and welcome to the next video podcast for GCSEP EdXL uh, for the new exam specification. Today we're going to be looking at component two, health, fitness and well-being. And we're going to look specifically at the importance of energy use. We're going to be looking at the nutrients that make up a balanced diet and look at what each of those nutrients do. And we're going to also look at how performers use their diet to help increase their health and fitness. Looking specifically at carbo loading hydration and timing of protein intake. So in summary for the session today, it's all about how your diet can help to improve your health and fitness. We're gonna look at the factors that make up a balanced diet. We're gonna look at the role of diet in increasing your health and fitness. And we're gonna look at the different factors that affect what we call our optimum weight. As with all of the video podcasts, any information that is underlined, please make a note of it. Feel free to pause and rewind the video at any time. Thank you. And make sure you make notes. Okay, so we're going to first of all look at the seven nutrients that make up a balanced diet. You've probably seen a food wheel before, and it's important that you know that all of these nutrients make up a diet, and it's important that we get the right proportions, we balance it out. The first nutrients are minerals, then we've got vitamins, fats, fiber, carbohydrates, water, and proteins. They're the seven factors and nutrients, make sure you know them, make a note of them. An easy way to remember these seven nutrients is my very fat friend can't water plants. And they make up what we call a balanced diet. So what do each of those nutrients do and how do they contribute to our overall health? Well, minerals, they give us a healthy body. Um, they provide us with calcium and iron Calcium for healthy bones, hemoglobin to help carry blood from the iron. And vitamins are essential for body functions such as having good vision, having good skin, good healing properties and healthy teeth. So we've got vitamins and minerals. we also got fats which make up a, a large chunk of our diet, 30%. And they provide us with energy. We also have fibre which helps us to break down foods. They provide the roughage to break down all of the food so that we can absorb them into our body. We have carbohydrates which provide energy and they provide 50% of our overall diet. So we need to lots of carbohydrates in our, our diet. And there are simple carbohydrates and complex. Simple carb, uh, carbohydrates break down and release energy a bit slower and they come from things like potatoes. And complex uh, break down really quickly, provide us a quick burst of energy and come from foods high in sugar. So they make up 50% of our diet. We also have water which helps to keep us hydrated and it's important we're hydrated so that we can transport nutrients, waste and hormones around our body. And proteins, they make up a large chunk as well, they're important for growth and repair of the muscles, the tissues and all of the fibres in our body. Without protein we can't grow and develop and repair our muscles. Now we can divide these nutrients into two main sections. We have macronutrients and we need those in large amounts carbohydrates fats and proteins micronutrients with vitamins and minerals we have small amounts of those and then we also have water and fiber so make sure you know each of these nutrients make sure you know what they do and make sure you know the proportions that we need them in our diet too much or too little of some of these nutrients can be bad for our health okay so that's our diet there are seven factors we also need to know about how athletes use their diet to help improve their performance. And one really important thing that athletes do is they do something called carbohydrate loading, also known as carbo loading. And this is just about taking in lots of carbohydrates in their diet so that when they perform, they've got lots of energy. So it helps us to maximize the amount of glycogen in our muscles, which gives us more energy. So if you were to run a marathon, you might the day before go to what we call pasta parties, eat lots of carbohydrates, and then when you do the marathon, you've got lots of energy for it. An athlete will also make sure after performance or training, they take some more carbohydrates in to replenish the lost energy. So carbo loading is an important process to maintain energy. The timing of protein intake is also important as well. And a lot of research and scientists have told us that the best time to take protein is immediately after exercise. This helps us to build and repair the muscle that we've just been using. And it helps to also quicken that process or synthesize the process of repair. So you see that this person here is finished his workout and he's having a protein shake. 
So these are two important strategies that athletes will use to maximize um, the food that they eat and help them to improve their performance. Finally, we're going to look at in this podcast, um, optimum weight in sports. It's important that you know about this. So what is optimum weight? Well, optimum weight is defined as the most favorable weight to produce the best performance in sport. So for example, the most optimum weight for a horse jockey would be really light because the horse doesn't want to carry the weight. However, the most optimum weight for a sumo wrestler would be really heavy so they can push their opponent out. And we have different optimum weights in different sports and we also have variation within sport. And you can see from these pictures here, the athletes are all different shapes and sizes. Some are tall, some are short, some look heavier than others. So optimum weight can vary in sport. And there are lots of different factors that affect your optimum weight in your sport. And we're gonna quickly look at them. Um, diet is a huge factor. If you have a lots of food in your diet, obviously it's gonna increase your weight. If you don't have as much, it's gonna decrease it. So it's important you get the balance, the energy balance right between what goes in and what goes out. So the first factor that affects our optimum weight is height. And generally, the taller you are, the heavier you are. The shorter you are, the lighter you are. That's why you don't see a lot of jockeys who are really tall. And you can see how, how these two athletes vary. Basketball player weighs a lot more than this athlete from a long time ago. So that, your height affects your optimum weight. The second factor is your bone structure. And people with a heavier bone structure or bigger skeleton are generally heavier people. And you see from this rugby team here, if you were to measure these, some of them, just because they're taller and larger than their bone structure, might be heavier than others. So your bone structure affects your optimum weight. The third factor is your muscle girth. So the more muscle an athlete has, the heavier they will be. If you were to measure muscle and fat, generally muscle mass is heavier than fat mass. So the more muscle you have, the heavier you weigh. So someone like... A wrestler who's got lots of muscle is also going to be very heavy. And then the fourth factor is your gender. Generally, men are heavier than women. That's not always the case, but generally they are. And you can see this picture here of a mixed tennis team with Andy Murray. Um, generally, men are heavier than women because generally men are taller, have a bigger bone structure and more muscle gear. So their um, gender will affect their weight. So in summary, there are four factors that affect our optimum weight. You need to know these four factors and you also need to know how they affect your optimum weight. For example, the taller you are, the heavier you are. And you need to be able to link that to examples in sport and I've given you some there. Okay, so in summary, we've looked at how our diet and our factors can affect our weight in being healthy and being fit. We've looked at the seven factors and we looked at the different proportions of those factors and making sure we have the right amount. And we also looked at how each of these nutrients affect our health. We also looked at carb loading and protein intake and the importance of that for performance. And then we finally finished off by looking at our factors that affect our optimum weight, which are height, bone structure, muscle girth, and gender. But feel free to go back and look through the podcast, make some notes, make sure you bring your notes to the next lesson. Thank you.